These people who have endeavored to explore outside the box, or more accurately, outside the ball, are now being labeled flat earthers. Yeah, but that's what they are. You know, because you keep banging on about the earth being flat and level and all that stuff. Well, I see you found Dali 3, uh, Mr. Dubay, which is handy for you because that's the only way you're ever going to get pictures of the flat earth, isn't it? And called by many a cult. Ah, uh, yeah, but not by me. Everybody knows I do not swear in my videos. A cult. Ah, right. C-U-L-T. Got it. But is this idea of a level plain earth, and people who advocate for it, truly cultish? Well, let's find out, shall we? Please subscribe. What actually defines a cult? Cult behavior? Cult ideology? And does flat earth fit the bill? Merriam-Webster defines cult as, quote, a religion and its body of adherents, regarded as unorthodox, spurious, or falsified, in great devotion to a person, idea, object, movement, or work. So that would be a yes then, Eric. Flat Earth is a cult. According to you, at least. I still haven't made my mind up. Wikipedia furthers the definition, explaining that cults, quote, range in size from local groups with few members to international organizations with millions. I've got to say, I'm very confused by this video. I thought the object of the exercise was to demonstrate why Flat Earth isn't a cult. All you've done so far is verify that it is. You know, devotion to an object. Well, the Flat Earth would be an object if it was real. Millions of members internationally. Can you think of a country that doesn't have Flat Earthers? Because I can't. Not looking good so far, Eric, is it? and require unwavering devotion to a set of beliefs and practices. Look, we get it. The Flat Earth is a cult. You don't need to bang on about it. Now, were we at any stage in your video gonna hear your reasons why you think it isn't a cult? Moreover, colloquially speaking, quote, in the English-speaking world, the term cult often carries derogatory connotations. Okay, so cults are generally considered bad for a few reasons. They often use manipulative and coercive tactics to control members, which can lead to psychological harm. CC is a perfect example of it. They might also isolate members from friends and family. Well, we've all heard about flat earthers who've lost their families due to their beliefs. They might demand significant financial contributions. Again, we've all seen Nathan Oakley's live streams. Also, the leaders often exploit members for their own gain, which is what Eric is doing right now, so that's true as well. In this sense, it has been considered a subjective term used as an ad hominem attack against groups with differing doctrines or practices. So does that mean when somebody attacks a person's physical appearance rather than the argument they're making? Like, I don't know, when people leave comments like this on my videos. Because obviously having 30mm gauges in my ears and tattoos on my face makes me not have any scientific knowledge at all. Everyone knows that. As such, religion scholar Megan Goodwin has defined the term cult, when used by the layperson, as simply being shorthand for a religion I don't like. Well, I don't know who Megan Goodwin is, so I can't really comment on whether she did or didn't say that. But I will add this to it. I don't like any religion, but I don't think that all religions are cults, just the culty ones. When considering this connotation, it is no surprise people taught since childhood that heliocentric globe earth cosmology is the only reasonable, rational possibility, would perceive those who dared consider other alternatives as crazy and cultish. Well, it's not really that the Earth being a globe is the most reasonable or plausible possibility. It's just that the Earth being a globe is a fact, whether Flat Earthers believe that or not. And I've no Flat Earthers ever wondered why it is that every time they try to prove that the Earth is flat, they somehow end up accidentally demonstrating that it's a globe. I mean, I, you know, there's, we don't see you, Enrique. Lift up your, lift up your light way above your head. Interesting. And why does he keep talking about those big trees that posh people plant in their garden? I mean, my garden's tiny. I haven't got room for connotations in there. So if we were only speaking to colloquial connotation, then clearly the concept of Flat Earth and the recent rise of Flat Earthers would seem to many like a cult. You can obfuscate as much as you like, pal. But everyone who isn't gullible enough to believe you and every other Flat Earther knows that you hide your mistakes and ignorance behind big words and complex language. And I hate to be the one to break it to you, but you're not fooling anyone. 
Well, you're not fooling anyone who's worth fooling anyway. But the real definition is the denotation. And when considered closely, it is actually the heliocentric globe Earth cosmology and its apologist adherents who truly display cult-like behavior. See, you just did it then. You could have just as easily said, I think globe Earthers are the cult not flat earthers. Unless, of course, that's not what you meant, because that would be an ad hominem attack, wouldn't it? For starters, literally every modern day flat earther began believing the heliocentric globe model. And then they decided that there were certain elements of what reality is that they don't understand and that physics is hard, so by default the Earth can't possibly be a globe. Because it is presented by the mainstream media and education system as absolute, undeniable gospel truth. Well, yeah. I don't know if I would have used the word gospel due to its religious connotations, but the rest of it was right. No alternative cosmologies are even considered, and students are told that Flat Earth was a false, fringe worldview believed only by our ignorant ancient ancestors. Once again, you're correct, Mr. Dubé. Now, I can't help but notice that you don't seem to be doing an awful lot to help the Flat Earth argument in this video. There will even be a wiki fact check under this very video, warning you that, quote, Flat Earth is an archaic and scientifically disproven conception of Earth's shape. Ah, but that's because YouTube is a business, and the way YouTube makes money is by selling adverts to other businesses, and those other businesses do not want to be associated with something as ridiculous as Flat Earth. This is the very kind of one-sided, black-and-white rhetoric found in cults. That sounded like another ad hominem attack. But when it comes to the shape of the Earth, it is black and white. It's clear cut, it's straightforward, and there is no ambiguity. The Earth is an oblate spheroid, whether flat Earthers choose to believe that or not. That's the good thing about facts, see? It doesn't matter if anybody believes them, a fact will always be a fact. For example, the Earth being a globe. Which stands in stark contrast to the reality of every modern flat Earther who had to personally overcome and seek beyond such imposed limitations to realize that viable alternatives do exist. Viable alternatives to what? The shape of the Earth? <laughs> really? And have not been scientifically disproven whatsoever. Yes, it has, and the two occasions that spring to mind for me are Geronism's experiment. Interesting. And the late Bob Nodell's experiment. They're both flat earthers who prove that the earth is a globe. Much like cult members breaking free from indoctrination, anyone becoming skeptical of the globe has to quietly do their own deep research into alternative concepts. <laughs> Yeah, alternative. Very alternative. And by research, I'm going to assume that you mean exactly the same as every other flat earther. Watch your 200 proofs video. Because let's be realistic about it, that is the only research flat earthers do. They go looking for other flat earth videos and then sit there and say to themselves, see, I knew I was right. In this sense, flat earthers better fit the description of people coming out of a cult, whereas globe earth proponents are the ones towing the party line, repeating slogans and claims taught since childhood, and punishing ex-members for daring to question the authority of their dogma. Now obviously I don't know if Eric Dubé will ever see this video, or if he'll even care that I've made this video, but if you do see it Eric, answer this one question for me and answer it honestly. Apart from people like me who make videos debunking people like you as nonsense, have you ever seen anybody from our side of the fence publish a video to YouTube or anywhere else on the internet defending the Earth for the sake of defending the Earth's shape? I think you'll find the answer you're looking for is no. And I'll tell you for why. It's because facts do not need defending. It's nice to be able to use them to combat people like you, but they most definitely do not need defending. When attempting to engage in rational, reasonable discussion, it's best to avoid flat earthers altogether. Yeah, we know. Globe earthers almost always resort to sophist tactics like scoffing, sarcasm. Now there's no need to get personal. <laughs> insults, and employ a variety of logical fallacies from straw man and ad hominem attacks to circular reasoning and appeals to authority. Flat Earthers do love a good fallacy, don't they? It's a shame that the irony is lost on them. 
Very rarely does a globe earther not resort to these reactions, and in my experience, the few who do soon become skeptics themselves. Well, as far as experience goes, that just goes to show how inexperienced you are. Give me one example of a globe earther, somebody like me who makes videos debunking the flat earth, who's now a flat earther. If we accept the premise that our beliefs are rooted in emotional attachments rather than in cool assessments of evidence, there is little reason to imagine that rational debate will break the spell. How can a debate with a flat earther possibly be rational? Now I've watched lots of Fight the Flat Earth's debates against flat earthers, and he's very, very good at it. Every single time he takes on a flat earther, he makes them look like a complete moron. And yet the flat earthers are always the ones shouting the loudest that they won. As Mark Twain stated, it is easier to fool people than to convince them they have been fooled. Well, his real name was Samuel Clements, and an interesting little factoid for you. He adopted the Mark Twain pseudonym in 1863, and it came from his time as a riverboat pilot. Mark the Twain means the second mark on a line that measured the depth of the water, signifying two fathoms or 12 feet, which was a safe depth for riverboats. Well, I thought it was interesting anyway. The globe also has its charismatic, unquestionable cult leaders like Neil Snake and DeGrass Tyson, Bill Nye the Pseudoscience Guy, and Carl Millions and Billions and Trillions Sagan. Now I've said this before and I'm sure I will have reason to say it again. How arrogant do you have to be to say something like that? And by the way, I thought we were avoiding ad hominem attacks. But the joke's on you anyway, because Bill Nye isn't actually a scientist, he's an engineer. This is engineering, huh? Hello, Oompa Loompas of science. <laughs> Oh, there we are. That's upset all the engineers that watch me. <laughs> These and other spokespeople, long before them, have been paraded affront the public for generations, preaching the globe gospel, presenting it as absolute truth, and repeatedly denouncing anyone with alternative beliefs. And what that means is these people who are all at the top of their fields accidentally prove how stupid flat earthers are on a daily basis. And as for you, Mr. Douche Nozzle, you weren't even top of your class, which is impressive, considering you're an only child and you were homeschooled. Well, okay, so the name picked at random today was Jay Vers. And remember, all you've got to do to be included is sign up to Patreon or channel memberships like all these lovely people have done. Now, I had an idea yesterday, and if you're in my Discord server, you might have already seen it. I wondered if it might be worth checking in on some of the flat earthers who've fallen off their space pizza. Now, there were a couple of reasons I thought of the first person I would check in on, and it was Professor Funbags. Sorry, I mean Orphan Red. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see me catch up with some old friends who strangely seem to really dislike me for some reason. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all again in a couple of days. Oh, you're still here then. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned something new. If you did, then you'll probably enjoy this video as well. Don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't already and subscribe if you're new. And I will see you all again very soon or in a few minutes if you do decide to watch this recommended video. <laughs> Love you, bye.